In this video we go looking for some scarcer wading birds for our year list, we go to a very smelly rubbish tip to try and find some rare gulls, and we look for a couple of unusual ducks. Our day started with a drive down the Wirral to Burton Mere Wetland. Hey folks, if you can hear us past the geese, um, they're making a right racket. Oh, they're chasing each other off now. We are at Burton Mere Wetlands to see if we can pick up any more birds for our big year. Stick with us, let's see if we can find some. After arriving, our first port of call was the bird feeders that were near the visitors centre. These are frequented by a lot of small birds, mainly the common stuff, like your chaffinch and blue tit and great tit also. Amongst all these small birds at the hectic bird feeder, I did spot this lovely little coal tit that was sat in a nearby bush. There was also a very expectant customer sat under the bird tables, hoping for dropped morsels. We left these birds behind and walked round towards the first screen, passing en route this moorhen who was walking across the path. When we arrived at the screen we peered out to see if we could see anything at all through the mist. We could see a few birds including this Canada goose and a little bit further up a bird I did expect to see here which was the resident great white egret. This time it was stood in its regular spot. At one point it became quite animated as it jumped to try and get a fish. It failed but landed in quite deep water so flapped around until it reached the shallows again. Another species that was present on this misty pool was this adult little grebe that was fishing. Our next stop on the trail was Marsh Covert Hide. This hide is in the middle of a bit of a reed bed. It can be a little hit and miss though, sometimes being great and sometimes being quite quiet for birds. On this occasion it was reasonably quiet. We did see some of the more common species like mollard and coot and from the other side of the hide we saw a pair of gadwall dabbling in some waterlogged grass. Hey folks, um, not too much at Mar Marsh Covert Hide, just some normal stuff, mollards and gadwall and herons and such. Um, we're heading now to the bridge screen and then up to Burton Point to have a look over the estuary, see if we can find some ruddy shell duck which have been reported here. Mr Hopin. Mr Hopin, and then on to uh, Border Hide which is the furthest most hide on the reserve. So stick <laughs> with us, let's see what we can find. The bridge screen looks over a pool, and the first thing was pretty amazing. Firstly, it seemed like our friend the Great White Egret had moved on with us, or it had a friend. The amazing thing wasn't the Great White Egret, it was that every single local heron seems to have landed here. They were all by the side of the reeds, or in the reeds, roosting, or preening. I counted something like 27 of them, I'm sure that's the most I've seen in one place before. Although they do have a pretty active heronry here, so it's not really that surprising. Continuing to look around us, there was a very close little egret that was almost by our feet. It was feeding him some short reeds and seemed completely oblivious to the onlookers. There are also some waders here, most abundant by far being the black-tailed godwit, that were all feeding tummy deep or deeper in the water, which is quite comical to watch. There was the odd duck amongst the godwits feeding, like this pair of pintail, that spent most of their time with their heads under the water. We set about walking round the path up to Burton Point, where you can look over a large marsh area, on the way seeing this noisy, quite territorial wren. Our reason for going up to Burton Point is that somebody had seen a pair of ruddy shell duck up there, so that was definitely worth checking out. Upon arrival we would looked over a vast area of marshland with pools. Kaylee set up the scope in pretty windy conditions and we set about trying to find the ruddy shell duck. Upon scanning we did find there were thousands and thousands of geese on the marsh, most appearing to be pink footed geese or grey like geese, but luckily, reasonably soon, Kaylee looked in a place I hadn't which was actually quite close to us and picked out the pair of ruddy shell duck. They were pretty conspicuous in plumage being light brown and white. 
This species naturally breeds in Southeast Europe and Asia, with a few turning up in the UK every year. There is some debate if these birds are natural vagrants or have descended from domestic stock. Regardless, it's another bird for our year list that we're really happy to see. And luckily, Kaylee was eagle-eyed enough to find them. But now it was on to border hide, the furthest most hide on the reserve, and one that can sometimes be quite productive. When we got there, we sat down, opened a window, and started checking out the scene in front of us. There were plenty of birds there, the most obvious being a group of waders in the middle of the pool. These were mainly black-tailed godwits, and most of them were roosting. I scan around the sides of the pool, found some other roosting birds, like these shovelers. It dumbfounded me how anything could stay asleep with the noise coming out of the black-headed gull colony. And maybe due to this, some birds were definitely still awake, including this pair of shell duck that were feeding in the middle of the pool. Back to scanning through the waders, we picked out some birds that weren't black-tailed godwit. On the right-hand side of this group, there are two birds which look different from the godwits. These are spotted redshank. They're still in their winter plumage, as in summer, they are jet black with pale speckles. They differ from the common red shank in plumage colour. They have an eye stripe and also a very thin beak. The new birds didn't stop there. We watched another bird fly in and join the black-tailed godwit. It looked similar but not quite the same, being paler with much more obvious marking. And the species giveaway, its tail was barred and not black. This made it a bar-tailed godwit. This is the rarer of the two godwit species that come to the UK. They breed in Siberia and Scandinavia and pass through in the winter. We watched this bird for a while until at one point all the birds were spooked and relocated to the right hand side of the pool on some grass. We found the bar-tailed godwit again which almost as soon as it landed it fell asleep. Feeling pretty happy with picking up a couple of new species of wader, we just had one final scan before we left, seeing this wonderful group of avocet that were feeding in the shallows near us, one coming particularly close so we could get great views of this bird. With its striking black and white plumage and slightly upturned thin beak, these birds breed here at Burton Moor Wetlands. Hey folks. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> hey folks, I hope everyone likes Kelly's new glasses. I hate them. She she looks gorgeous. <laughs> she looks great in those new glasses. Um, we've just been to Border Hyde. It was good. Um, uh, we've had spotted red shank. Uh, we've picked out a bar-tailed godwit amongst a load of black-tailed godwits, which are it's like the rarer of the two godwits in the UK. We've seen a ruddy shell duck at Burton Point. So pretty successful mission. What's next? It was time to walk back to the car, passing all the screens and all the pools on the way, seeing this mollard, our most common duck in the UK. And as we got nearer to the visitor centre, there were some more small birds in the trees, like the super cute long-tailed tit, with its black, white and pink plumage. This individual was pecking at lichen on a branch. And what trip to a nature reserve would be complete without a super friendly robin coming really close? It was a lovely visit and some signs of spring as well with these lovely daffodils. But now it was time to cross the Mersey estuary and head to a recycling centre in Widnes. Hey folks, we're in Widnes at a pretty smelly kind of recycling place. Um, it's, it's cold and it's smelly. But there are rare gulls here, or there have been recently. I hope you heard me because a big lorry went past. Um, <laughs> So we're going to have a search through the gulls. There's been Caspian's yellow leg, the Iceland gull, that Coomelin's gull we saw last time. There's been all sorts, so stick with us, see what we find. Walking up to this refuse tip recycling centre place, there was a horrendous smell, as you'd expect, but there were thousands of gulls here, flying around trying to pick out morsels of food from all the rubbish. Historically, I've heard reports of this being a superb place to pick out all sorts of rare gulls, and the Coomlins subspecies of Iceland gull that we saw in a previous video frequents here as well as the estuary nearby where we saw it last time. We first looked over a fence onto one of the roofs that was surrounding the facility where lots of the gulls were landing in between picking up morsels from the rubbish. 
There were so many different gulls here, it was difficult to differentiate species. There were certainly plenty of herring gulls, a lot of adults and also young as well. Other than the reports of the Cumulins gull, there have been reports also of Caspian gull, yellow-legged gull and Iceland gull. The Caspian gull in particular is one I'm missing for the year and one that I find really hard to differentiate from the herring gull. After scanning for a while though, another gull came into sight which looked a little unusual. Perhaps you can pick it out in this video, it's a very large pale gull but with no black wing tips. This large gull is a Glaucus gull and it's also an adult which is incredible, we were surprised to see this. And although we have seen one this year already, this is the first adult either of us has seen, so it was great to find. These gulls usually reside a little bit north of the UK and just visit sporadically in the winter. This one seemed pretty comfortable amongst all the other gulls waiting to try and get some food out of the rubbish. It was huge against the herring gulls. We watched it for a while and then decided to head round to the other side of the facility to see what we could find. On the way, passing a tree with some small birds in it. These turned out to be siskin. There were both males feeding here and also females. They also didn't seem too bothered by me getting quite close to get this footage. They're stunning small birds and look like little canaries. Upon arriving at the front of the buildings, there were more gulls than before. Most flying round or sat expectantly on the roof waiting for another bin van to come in. Kaylee set the scope up and tried to scan through them, but it was almost impossible to pick anything out as there were so many birds and they were all very mobile. As soon as a bin lorry came in and dropped off rubbish, some of the birds were flying straight in and trying to sift through the rubbish for food and morsels. They were fighting and scrapping, with some being a little bit more patient like this lesser blackback gull waiting on the pavement. After a while, one of the other birders picked out the Coomlins gull that we'd seen last time. This is a subspecies of Iceland gull. You can see it here in the middle, a very pale bird with no black wing tips. This is super. I'm glad we saw it again and got slightly better views than last time. Although this place is a little unconventional for bird watching, it's an absolute mecca for gulls and you never know what's going to turn up. So we will be back, but possibly with a nose peg. I finished work early and decided to head up the Welsh coast towards Morfam Madryn Nature Reserve. But the birding started sooner than I expected. Not long after I set off I saw a little round shape on a fence. It was a red legged partridge. So I got out the car to have a look, peered over the fence and saw there were three of them in the field, including this one that was stood next to some farm equipment. A little bit further up the road I drove past another shape in the field. Stopped the car to investigate and it happened to be a buzzard. It was sat right next to the road. It took one look at me, had a poop and then flew a little bit further away. Although a common bird of prey, you don't often see him this close. But now on to more for Madryn Nature Reserve. Hey folks, how you doing? I am at Morfa Madryn Nature Reserve, which is on the North Wales coast near Conwy. I've come here, I was working nearby and thought I would pop in to see what they have here. It's usually pretty reliable for green trank, which we need for our year list. So uh, stick with me, let's see what I can find. This is a reserve I've only been to a few times, as we've only reasonably recently found it. But it's really nice, a small reserve with a couple of hides looking over some flooded fields near an estuary. I went to the furthest hide first and looked out, seeing initially a group of widgeon on the island feeding. A little bit further up there was a very very noisy group of Canada geese which seem extremely common here. As I scanned further across the pool in front of me, I noticed a large group of waders, mainly Redshank and Dunlin, that were roosting as it was coming to high tide. As I moved along the line of waders, I noticed something behind the Dunlin or Redshank, and it was the bird I was looking for, the Greenshank. There were a few of them feeding at the back, and then I noticed one really close to me in front, feeding in the shallow water, these are lovely pale birds with a very slightly upturned beak. It wasn't the only shank that was feeding close in. There was this red shank 
that was very busily feeding along the shoreline. Other birds present included this female red-breasted meganza that was feeding close to the shore. I walked a little bit further up to the next hide, which looked over a pool in some grassland. There weren't quite as many species of birds, but there were a lot of one species, the lapwing. These noisy birds are very attractive if you see them up close, with quite iridescent plumage on the back. After this successful little walk, I headed back towards the car with the intention of having a quick look at the shore. As I was on the way down the path, I looked above me to see this very graceful red kite soaring above my head. When I got to the shore, I walked right down to the front to see if there were any shapes on the shoreline. And there were another green shank and also a dunlin that was sat on the water's edge. Now, I wasn't going to use this footage, but it's something that I don't see very often, which is a red-breasted meganza out of the water. This female came up onto the bank and had a flap, but unfortunately, now it was time to head home and leave more for Madryn behind. Hey folks, we're here at Clyde Pools, not far from where we live. Um, someone's reported a wood duck here, which is an introduced species, but a good one to add to our year list. Let's see if we can find it. There's plenty of birds out there. It was nice to have Kaylee back birding with me as she wasn't with me at Moor for Madryn. So we looked out on the pool to see if we could find the wood duck or even if the snow goose was still here. And there was plenty of life, including an awful lot of Canada geese, most of which are on the bank and not in the water. Some of the ducks around included these shovelers, some of them displaying also a small number of tufted duck like this handsome drake there were quite a few coot feeding and making an awful lot of noise but soon enough we spotted the wood duck that we were looking for it was swimming on the far side of the pool this very attractive duck sometimes called the carolina wood duck are native to america most of these birds that are observed in the uk are presumed to be escapees from collections that have bred and become naturalized this individual appeared pretty happy, but seemed pretty attached to this male mollard and followed it around everywhere. Notice our friendly couple passed the snow goose in some of this footage. Although we've seen this bird here before, I don't want to leave it out because it in itself is quite a rarity. And this one is a blue morph instead of a pure white snow goose. It's been here for a while. After a short while of us watching, the birds were spooked by a farm vehicle. With all the geese moving and then taking off, you can see in this video our snow goose is amongst them. It took a while for all the birds to settle. So we took a walk a little bit further along the path to try and get a different view. We found our snow goose almost straight away, which was sat on the bank. The wood duck was a bit more difficult to relocate, but finally we found it as the rain started. It was swimming and feeding at a shallow side of the pool. This time, strangely, not with its mollard friend. Although not native, what an excellent bird to add to our year list. And with the rain coming in, that was our cue to head home. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please press the notification bell. We'll see you for the next adventure.